In the 16th century, Plymouth produced numerous sea captains who would put England very much on the map, shaping national and international affairs. The most famous of all of these is the subject of this video, Sir Francis Drake. We go in search of what remains of Drake's world in and around his hometown of Plymouth. We hope you enjoy the ride. We now go to our reporter Simon to see what he has discovered for us. So here we are in Tavistock, which is approximately 15 kilometers away from the port of Plymouth. Many of the buildings that were in Drake's time are still here today. Let's go and have a look at some of them. This is what remains of the cloister of a former Benedictine monastery. More of the old monastery and gatehouse is here. Why Tavistock, you may ask? Well, Sir Francis Drake was born here. The exact spot is here at Crowndale Farm. What we do know is that Mary Newman married Francis Drake right here in St. Budo Church in 1569. But what we don't know was where she was really from. One theory is that Mary was the sister of Drake's shipmate, Harry Newman, who, as we know, was from St. Budo. Here we are in Saltash, right across from the River Tamar. Some believe that Mary lived here in Culver Street, right in this very cottage. The couple had no children, and Mary died on the 25th of January, 1582. It was here she was buried in St. Budo Church, only 13 years after her wedding day. A further link is that the sailor Robert Barrett from Saltash sailed with Drake on one of Hawkins's slave voyages. Saltash is linked to Drake yet again thanks to Tremerton Castle. Because it was here that Drake kept all the gold, silver and jewels he had stolen from the Spanish during his circumnavigation of the planet from 1577 to 1580. In part 3 we go to the centre of Plymouth to see some of the buildings from Drake's time that are still visible today. You're very welcome aboard. <laughs> 